Trans Am Tour. I'm Rick Benjamin. Alongside is Bill Adam. And Bill, there aren't very many racetracks in the world where you go to the event via boat. Well, not very many at all. And this is a rare luxury we have today. If you wanted to win a Trans Am race in the water, then maybe you would buy a 40-foot Hustler with those three big block Chevys in the back. But today, we've got a lot more competition. We have Ford versus Chevrolet. That Ford versus Chevy battle was very hot last year, but Ford has really upped the ante this year. And I think this battle really began back at the factories themselves, back in Detroit. Indeed, the battle did go all the way back to Detroit, right here to the Ford Motor Company headquarters. The car that they had was not up to it from an aerodynamic standpoint. And this new car, the brand new Mustang, was brought out to be followed by the race version. A very slippery car, unlike last year's car, which a lot of drivers termed as a brick going through the air. This car is a pure aerodynamic masterpiece. Look at the lines as they flow around the fenders. Everything is carefully thought out right up to the rear deck to provide a lot of downforce. But General Motors had done it the year before. Their Camaro was brought out in the idea of fuel economy, an incredibly slippery, sensuous shape to cut through the wind. And the race cars, well, they showed their worth by bringing home a championship once again for Chevrolet Camaro. This year is no different. The cars are exactly as they ran last year. Very slippery, very good, but will they be good enough? That's the question to be answered today at the first Trans Am of 1994. Scott Pruitt, a former champion, returning to the series this year aboard a Chevrolet from the Buzz McCall team. The past couple of seasons, they've won the title. And Pruitt really is fired up about this year. Well, he is. I mean, he's come through a lot of ranks. He was a Trans Am champion a few years ago. He went through Indy cars, and now he is back with the cars that he admittedly has had the most fun with. These are the most satisfying of all. We're looking forward to an outstanding event today. Let's meet the third member of our broadcast team. John Bisignano is on pit road. Well, this first Trans Am race here in Miami is number 303 in the history of a great road racing championship. And someone who has been at most of these races is Bob Anderson, the president of the Sports Car Club of America, Pro Racing Limited. Bob, we've heard a lot about the golden age of Trans Am racing a few years back, but I think things have to be equally as dynamic now. Oh, I think more than equal right now. I, I mean, I understand the heritage, and it was great to uh, bask in that glory in the old years, but the depth of the field and the level of competition is an all-time high, without a doubt. So many champions competing, so many front runners, young blood up there wanting to beat those champions. Have you ever seen a more competitive situation for production-type automobiles? No, I really haven't. Obviously, in, uh, there's a great group in NASCAR that has that, that level of uh, excitement and competition. But in road racing, uh, this is unequaled as far as I'm concerned. Well, a great Trans Am history entering the second golden age right here in Miami. Thanks, John. Crime's coverage of the Grand Prix of Miami is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. No car company brings more race-winning technology to the street than Chevrolet. We'll be back for the start of today's event in a moment. not sure why you love your car, perhaps for its looks, the way it performs, its effect on others. Whatever the reason, at Eagle One we know how you feel. Eagle One car care products for people who love their cars as much as we do. If this is your reality, maybe you need a First Union reality check. The loan that can help you like your reality a whole lot better. <laughs> First Union introduces the reality check. The hassle-free loan that helps life run a little more smoothly. Hop to the islands, Abaco or Bimini. Paradise is calling. Do the Bahamas with me. So many islands. 
Call your travel agent or 1-800-8-BAHAMAS. We're back at beautiful Miami. Prime's coverage of the opening round of the 1994 SCCA Trans Am Series, the Grand Prix of Miami. Great to have you with us today. I'm Rick Benjamin alongside veteran driver and analyst Bill Adam. Bill, great to have you along this day and this year. This is your hometown racetrack. It is certainly my hometown track, and it's one that I have been looking forward for years to see Trans Am cars on. This is It's a track that is really made for these cars, and I think the EMSA cars outlived their attraction at this particular place. This crowd is a, is a highly Latin crowd. They love cars sliding around the track. The, the sounds of high horsepower, the loud V8 sounds. They go crazy and watch them as the race goes on. They get very vocal in their support. <laughs> for these cars to be here is a natural application for the Trans Am series. Well, we're thrilled to bring the Trans Am to Miami in 1994 to kick off the season. The field lining up 32 cars strong today. This entry list in Trans Am just gets longer and stronger every year. It does, and, and the quality of cars as well. We are seeing so many really, truly good cars with a chance to win this race. And I, again, I can refer back to IMSA. In past years, we have seen cases where only two or perhaps three cars were capable of winning. Today, we honestly have a potential of probably 15 to 18 cars with a real, honest-to-goodness shot of winning this. And that's perfect. That's exactly what you want, where you get a, a highly competitive field. Since this is the start of a brand new season, many of the cars and drivers are brand new to their teams. We'll tell you about some of those new combinations as we move along today. The brand new Ford Mustangs are here with their new body configuration, and the Fords have been very quick so far. They sure have. They have been blindingly fast, particularly the Roush car that Tom Campbell is driving. And this is something, too, that will be a lot of fun to watch as the season goes on, where last year, to a large extent, it was strictly the domain of Riley, uh, Bob Riley's design winning over and over and over again. Now we have some challengers. Tom Campbell is in a car that is designed and built by Jack Roush, the big NASCAR name, and, of course, GTO and Trans Am name in the past. Uh, Paul Gentilozzi, he is in a chassis of his own design, or at least his manufacturer, Lee White being the designer of his car. So now they're challengers. We're getting some great aerial shots of the race course here in Miami. The Blockbuster Blimp providing us these great aerials. Today's appearance by the Blockbuster Video Blimp, part of its 1994 maiden tour through the eastern half of the United States. We welcome the Blockbuster Blimp and its crew to our broadcast today on Prime. Field starting to move away behind the pace cars here at Miami. I want to talk about the starting lineup for you today. Tommy Kendall coming back to this series full-time. Pole qualifier. He wins the $1,000 Ray Bestis Pole Award. And Kendall certainly the driver everyone's talking about. He is class. I mean, from, from Tom's first try at road racing, he has been successful. And where some drivers seem to mature and change their styles a little bit, Tommy has never had to change a thing because he has been so brilliant right from the outset. Driving RX-7s and moving up to GTP cars into Trans Am cars. He is a sensational driver. He's had a fling or two at Winston Cup on the road courses as well and has always done very, very well. Kendall out of La Canada, California, your pole qualifier here today. And on the outside of row one in car number 12, making his full-time return to the series, the Ray Bestis Ford Mustang of Dorsey Schrader. Dorsey, we saw in some great runs last year. He is a driver that even though he is sitting on the grid over a second behind Kendall, that is not something that will intimidate him. Incidentally, the view that we're getting right now, that is on top of Tom Kendall's Roush car. We have a camera mounted up on the roof to give you a really spectacular view, and you can just see it right there in the shot. So Kendall and Schrader in row one. Second row will include Ron Fellows out of Toronto and his AER Ray Bestis Mustang. And on the outside, Scott Pruitt. Back in the series full-time again out of Crystal Bay, Nevada, the Royal Oak Charcoal Chevrolet Camaro. And in row three, we have Jack Baldwin rounding out the Fast Five, former champion in the series, the Mattel Hot Wheels Chevy Camaro. That's car number one. And alongside him, Paul Gentilosi from Lansing, Michigan, in the Rocket Sports Camaro, car number 28. And, and Gentilosi won the Fast Five shootout at Dallas last fall to put a cap on this season, last season, for the Trans Am car. So he may be, very well be a strong contender today. Fourth row will include George Robinson and Bobby Archer. The Archer brothers moving to Ford this year. Row five, Irv Hare back with us this year in the SEA Camaro. And Tommy Archer, the other of the Archer brothers, in his Shell Zone Mustang. Row six, R.K. Smith in the Acer Computer Camaro. Boris said moving into the Gloy Racing team. Car number 22, the Gloy Racing Mustang. Seventh row, Tony Ave taking over the Jim Derhag car. 
Car number 40, Mike Dingman back in the series this year out of the Roush Stables and the General Chemical Mustang. The eighth row, Rick McCormick and John Gooding. Row nine is Stu Hayner, veteran driver from California, and Mandy Gonzalez from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Tenth row, Tim McAdam, an old friend of yours, Bill from Vail in the yes. Norwegian Cruise Line Chevrolet. Pete Musser from Lafayette, uh, California, in the Delta 5 Chevy Camaro. The 11th row, Ray Kong and Bill Saunders. Row 12, Bob Patch back in the series. The only Pontiac Trans Am competing this year. And Dale Phelan from South Carolina. 13th row, R.J. Valentine at car number 7. And uh, Harry, Henry McLaughlin. 14th row, Mike Berg and Bruce Barkaloo. Row 15, Tom Beatty and Carlos Lopez. 16th row, Eric Wells and Claudio Burton. And so 32 cars ready to take the green flag for 100 miles here at the Grand Prix of Miami. Yeah, in fact, we may actually have 33 cars in this because there was a notation that uh, they perhaps could let one additional car start. We'll just have to watch the back of the field to see if that does appear. But it's an incredible field. Right now, you can watch all the drivers going around the track just trying to get their tires a little bit of temperature. And a critical point that we can really watch with interest off the start is tire choice. Tom Kendall in the Roush car, because they ran so fast, so easily, are going on a medium compound tire all around. This is a, what they call a Goodyear 430. Some of the cars behind them are running a softer compound on the front wheels only. Now, there's two things to, to consider here, that the soft compound gives you more traction, and it also heats up faster. So initially, the car in second place may be the quickest car. Before we get the green flag today, let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team, John Bisignano is on pit road. Bill and Rick Goodyear brought three different types of compounds here. The very soft 240 compound, the medium softness in a compound, that's under number 430, and the very hard compound is 600. There's only one competitor using 600 on the rear, but throughout the entire grid, everyone is using the medium hard, medium soft compound of the 430. And up front, just about every team has a different combination between the fronts. Most people going in with the very soft 240s. I think it's the rear tires that are going to take a real damage accelerating out of these corners. A lot of tire spin here is going to eat these rear tires alive. They've got to manage their tires throughout the whole race. All right, thank you, John. We'll be back to bring you the start of the Grand Prix of Miami for the SCCA Trans Am Tour on Prime in a moment. Now you can bowl for just $1.49 a game at your nearby Brunswick Recreation Center. $1.49 a game, any day, any time. Lanes are available, so bring the gang, bring the whole family. Come on out and see how much fun bowling can be. Only $1.49 per game, and only at Brunswick Recreation Center. Now in Palmdale and Lancaster. Commuter alert. Low-cost transportation now means Mazda quality for just $89.88. Specially priced protégés, perfect for commuters who need a great ride at a low price, and you'll never beat this price. Brand new Mazda protégés now just $89.88. That's right, $89.88. Several to choose from in a variety of colors. The quality-built Mazda protégé, unbelievably, now just $89.88. Come on down to Lancaster Jeep Eagle Mitsubishi Mazda and see just how much car your money will buy. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Miami on Prime. Let's take a look at today's race conditions, courtesy of the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism. 78 degrees, our track temperature. The humidity are relatively simple to deal with, 50%. Winds are out of the northeast at 15 to 20 miles an hour. Skies are partly cloudy. It is cool and comfortable in Miami. The pace car is in, and we are about set to get the green flag for 100 miles of Trans Am action. The green is out. We're glad you're with us, and we're underway, and Tommy Kendall gets the start. Very well at hand, and he is your leader in the turn one. Not only that, but look at the guy who got up into second place. That is the AER car of Canadian Ron Bellows. So Ron is charging at Jack Baldwin, also a tremendous car, the Hot Wheels Camaro, into third place. Watch these cars. You'll see, look at the little power sliding here up Scott Pruitt, trying to get power down. On board, Jack Baldwin going up into the tight section of the track, and watch how they perform. Baldwin sitting in third spot, directly in front of him is the car of Ron Fellows in second. The white Mustang out in front, full qualifier, Tommy Kendall. First good straightaway of the race course here on lap number one, and Kendall opening up six or seven car lanes. Just after this corner, right now, they're getting out of the fastest part of the track. From here on, it's flat out all the way down this long section, third, fourth, fifth gear. Don't even left off here, you're flat on the power right through that section, and here we're up beyond 150, almost 160 miles an hour down Biscayne Boulevard. 
Dorsey Schrader, who had started up in the second row, has been dropped back to fifth spot here in the early going. Your leader is Kendall. Fellows in second spot, Kendall in car number 11. Lots of the drivers we talked with chasing him as we take you up topside in Jack Baldwin's Mattel Hot Wheels Camaro sitting third. A lot of these drivers were afraid Tommy Kendall would be able to check out very quick. And that is exactly what he is doing. Look at the lead he is pulling out already. He was fastest through the qualifying session. Again, 1.2 seconds quicker than the next car. And again in the morning warm-up, he was faster substantially than anybody else. So the brand new Roush chassis is really showing how good it is. And this is its first race in the season. The rest of the field that getting away cleanly. 33 cars getting the start here today. Paul Gentilosi, who qualified in the number six position, is running along in sixth spot, but he's managed to stay with the leaders. Your leader, Tommy Kendall, in the white car number 11 out of the Roush shops. Ford Racing on the side of that car as Ford introduces its brand new Mustang in 1994. Tommy Kendall with the first racing version of the Mustang doing a great job here in the early going. Kendall with a good lead over Ron Fellows. Jack Baldwin is third, Scott Pruitt running in fourth spot, and we watch as Tommy Kendall moves onto that very, very fast stretch of Biscayne Boulevard, the fastest straightaway of the course. Again, one of Kendall's traits has always been smooth driving, and this will pay off here. He will already have his tires up to maximum temperature. Now we're on board with Tom, and watch. Here he is, down to fourth gear. Point to this corner very carefully, and listen to him as he shifts. Just backing off. Look at the left foot. Barely touching that gas pedal going into turn one. See, he'll drop a gear. There he goes. Down to third gear now. Full power. Look at his right foot. And now we're on, you the up on the roof. Here we go. Back out to third gear, turning into the apex. He'll beat power on gently because the long corner. Grabbing fourth gear again briefly. Little step on the brakes. Drop one more gear into the apex. Slide out wide. Get ready to turn in tight again. Tighten the inside. Now feed power on. Fourth gear to stop the gas again. Touch the brakes briefly. We're going to be setting up here for this long straight. Now we do early braking. Turn in as smoothly as possible. Over the bumps right there. And here we go. This is the high speed section. Tommy is just barely lifting off to that corner there. Look at the speed. Look at the windshield wiper lifting off the glass. Kendall showing none of the effects of that bad crash a couple of years ago. He's back. He's ready for action. Tommy is he's so smooth in a car. I really enjoy watching him. It's like the Olympics. You watch the greatest skiers and they make it look like it's the easiest thing in the world. Kendall back down the main straightaway to put another lap on the board. Ron Fellows in second position in one of the other Mustangs in the field out of the Tom Floyd shops, but Fellows at the moment unable to do much more than keep Tommy Kendall in his gun sights. Jack Baldwin, the two Buzz McCall cars, Baldwin is third. Scott Pruitt, the IndyCar star, is fourth. Now, Gentilosi has come up to fifth spot. He is gotten by Dorsey Schrader. And you have to wonder if something isn't wrong with Dorsey's automobile. Well, that, that's the biggest surprise right there. Is Look, you can see Dorsey almost tried to go back inside, but he cannot make a pass where he is. He's in the wrong part of the course. Following Gentilosi around here and watch Dorsey's car to see if we can see any signs of a problem. This is a huge surprise. Dorsey got really loose coming out of the corner there. He tried to put the power down as early as possible. And his car is giving the indication of sticking well. I don't know what the problem is. Battle for fifth spot. Jen Losey has it over Schrader. Irv Hare at car number 15 has moved up to six. Now Irv started back in the ninth position, so he's made a couple of nice moves here in the very early going at Miami. Jack Baldwin ahead of Scott Pruitt. That is the battle for third, and the rest of the field stringing out behind. There's George Robinson in the background. He tried to move a, a inside of somebody. I couldn't tell who that was. Oh, look at this. He's sideways back into the barrier. Robinson overcooking it there, coming off the long straightaway at the end. The 74 Hunting Ranch Camaro driver out of Houston. A little bit of flame out of the side of the car as he tries to restart. He should be able to get back underway. I don't think the car is back Badly damaged. Here's a replay as we see him go sideways off the track. The tire barrier is doing exactly what they are designed for, just cushioning the impact before the concrete wall that is behind. He will, in fact, he's not. He's not going into the pits. I don't understand what he's doing. Maybe while well, the rear body work, in fact, has fallen off, yeah. he is probably going to try and carry on without making a pit stop to see how bad that car is. Great racing action here at the Grand Prix of Miami, and it's terrific to have you along as we kick off the 1994 SCCA Trans Am Tour. We'll be back with more in a moment. If you want more racing, you need on track. 
for over 10 years, On Track has provided the latest in Formula One, Formula 3000, Indy cars, Trans Am, IMSA, NASCAR, and more every two weeks. If you really want to know what's going on in auto racing, get the magazine that's 100% auto racing from cover to classifieds. Order one year, 25 issues now for only $29.97. Call toll-free 1-800-825-8214 and get on track. Do the Bahamas with me. So many islands, so many smiles. It's get to walk to the Bahamas. So many islands, so many friends. It's get to walk to the Bahamas. Call your travel agent or 1-800-8-BAHAMAS. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Miami. Camaro. What else would you expect from the country that invented rock and roll? Tommy Kendall continuing oh. as your leader in car number 11. And he came close to that wall getting off the corner. You can see he is using all the track. But watching Tommy's car, you never see the back end out of line. Fellow's car, for example, we've seen very small power slides so far. And look at the cars under braking. Tommy's is very stable. So is Ron. Let's watch as they go up the track. There is the end of the George Robinson's Camaro just sitting off the side there. So that's not a problem with the traffic. Not in the racing line, at least at this point. Through that last corner, I think that Ron Fellows may be closing up just a tiny bit. It does look like it. Now, this is very early. We're only five laps in out of 54. Does Fellows want to use that much of his car this early on? I think he does. I, I think... The biggest worry for all of these guys, and, and particularly as we look at the, the dead body work there, what they don't want to happen is for Kendall to be able to make a break. If Tommy successfully gets away, then he can back off. Instead of going to maximum revs and shifting at 8,000 or 8,500 revs, he backs off to 7,500, increases the lifespan of the car and all the components on it, and he can take it easy. They have to try and pressure this car because they know how quick it is. Tommy Kendall continues to hold the advantage here at the Grand Prix of Miami. Ron Fellows running in second position. The two Mustangs have really pulled out to a substantial lead now. Jack Baldwin in fourth spot. Paul Gentilosi has made a pass. According to timing and scoring, Gentilosi has advanced to third. We'll try to show you that in just a moment, but we watch the two leaders. Kendall in that Roush Racing Mustang. This is their own designed car. This is not a Riley and Scott car. Right. That is a real good one, too. And there were some interesting differences that perhaps later in the season we can maybe do a feature on this car. But they have, you can see through the windshield, there's a lot more roll cage showing. They decided to use part of this cage that normally extends up around the roof structure to, in fact, make a stiffer chassis. And as we look through the windshield, you will see a lot of tubing is very visible. There's Paul Gentlosi just passing us. Jack Baldwin indeed has dropped back to fourth. And Scott Fruit, his teammate in the Royal Oak Charcoal car, is in fifth. So Gentlosi in his Rocket Sports entry, that's his own chassis, doing a nice job. Gentlosi qualified back in sixth position. He has moved up three spots so far. Dorsey Schrader still trying to work his way around Scott Fruit. Dorsey's tried both oh, ways yeah. and hasn't had any success. God, what a wonderful battle this is. I think if this was anybody other than Scott through it, then the pressure may be getting to. Dorsey is trying inside, outside, just occupying every space in the mirror to create a mistake. But Scott is a very experienced driver. In fact, earlier we saw a statistic about some of the, the top 10 drivers. The fellow with the greatest winning percentage in Trans Am cars uh, is indeed Scott Pruitt. He has had 34 starts in the Trans Am, and, and out of that, 11 times he has won. So he is a remarkably successful Trans Am driver. Here's Gentilosi moving by one of the slower cars, putting him a lap down. He's opened up a couple of car lengths now on Baldwin. So Gentilosi in third, Baldwin is fourth, Pruitt is fifth, Dorsey Schrader Whoa. is sixth. Back in seventh, Irv Hare, and Hare has a lot of ground to make up if he wants to get back into that battle. In around through this final corner, this battle continuing. Back on top of the Hot Wheels car, 
We're watching up ahead. That's the gentle Lozy Camaro that's immediately ahead of us. And watch Jack as he goes through the corner. Tight the inside to feed on power. Here we go now. Now we're watching what he's doing. Down through a couple of gears. He's already up into second gear into a very slow section of the track. And look at the advantage of the power steering. Such a quick ratio. They hardly have to move the steering wheels at all. Now well, these are full-bodied sedans, but they're not very heavy race cars, about 2,500 pounds, so they're not that difficult to drive from a physical standpoint. No, they're really, they're very, very nice, and, and probably the most fun of all race cars. These are just marvelous, marvelous race cars. We take a look from the roof of Jack Baldwin's car at Genelosi ahead, Baldwin being shown in fourth spot as we work lap number seven here at the Grand Prix of Miami on Prime. Great to have you with us, Rick Benjamin, Bill Adam, John Bisignano here to kick off the 1994 SCCA Trans Am season on Prime. We'll be with you throughout the campaign to bring you the racing action, the top road race series in North America, right here for you on Prime all season long. Jen Losey just ahead of Baldwin. Now as they go into braking here, Baldwin, you'd think, could catch up a little bit to make up a little ground. Yeah, it, it's one of these cases that it always looks so much easier than it was. And I can remember when I was a little boy, I used to watch on TV and think, well, geez, I could do that. <laughs> Turned out my first few times in the car were very rude awakenings. It's a lot harder because of the, of the relative levels of expertise that we're watching here. These are the pros, the best in the world at what they're doing. All these drivers have tremendous experience in these cars as we take a look at Baldwin. He now has caught Jen Losey and Scott Pruitt is right there in the thick of things as well. Pruitt really doing a nice job. His return to full-time Trans Am competition after a lengthy layoff, a lot of time away in IndyCars. Yeah, this, this is a great battle right here. All four of these drivers, very experienced. And perhaps if somebody is going to show weakness, it may be Paul Gentilosi, because he is the one that's got his mirrors full of cars at this point. Look at Scott Pruitt. Slides up the inside of his own teammate, Jack Baldwin. Now look at what happened to Baldwin. He got passed by Schrader because he got blocked, could not get under power early enough. Schrader gets by both cars in one move. Dorsey with a great move there to gain two positions. For a moment, I thought Baldwin might have missed the shift or had some other oh. problem because he was slowing down. We've got one car that has spun the 99, the Jinsana Mustang, or rather the uh, Jinsana Camaro. That's Rick McCormick from Salinas, California, off the race course. And does the big daddy Don Garlitz turnaround move. And let's take another look at the pass here as we watch Dorsey Schrader and Scott Pruitt work on Jack Baldwin. Pruitt makes the move first, and as you called it, Schrader right behind him. And Pruitt is able to tuck in on Baldwin to try and make that initial move, but by forcing Jack to the outside, then Scott and hit the bumps, that threw his own timing off and gave Schrader just the opening. There's somebody else that's backwards coming out of turn three, I believe. One of the Camaros has spun. We'll try to get a look at the car number on that vehicle for you. We watch Genelosi and Schrader now as they battle it out for third spot. Genelosi third, Schrader fourth. He got by Pruitt for fifth. And Baldwin back in sixth spot. Let's go back up front now and take a look at your leader. This is Tommy Kendall in the Roush Racing Mustang. Qualified on the pole uh, more than a second quicker than the rest of the field. And he's really shown that strength there so far. That car is flying around this track. Very strong performance so far. Still followed by Dorsey Schrader and the AER Tom Goy Mustang. Both of these cars, the new body Mustangs, but obviously the aerodynamics are really working. Tommy Kendall moving by to put another lap on the board as he works around some lap cars with 34 cars in the starting field today on a 1.9 mile street circuit. We knew there would be a lot of traffic early on, but really so far, the leaders haven't had much problem getting through. No, not at all. In fact, the only problem in passing has been just that one move that we saw between Pruitt and Baldwin. There's a move right there, just ducking to the inside, and look at this. Genelosi making a pass there, working his way by to gain another position. As he Boy, and Dorsey's trying to come back on him. Oh, very geez. close racing in there. There was almost contact right there again. And now look at Scott Sharp. He's taking a shot up the inside. But at this point, Dorsey has got the better line. He is on the inside. They're facing a left-hand corner, so he's in a good position. Welcome back to the Trans Am for Dorsey Schrader and Scott Pruitt. And they have Jack Baldwin at bay at the moment. That car that spun about a lap or two ago is still backwards on the course there. Jen Losey continues to show in third spot. Schrader fourth. Pruitt fifth. Baldwin sixth. Those four cars battling for third, and they're under a blanket. Well, this is just what we hoped it would be. This sensational racing. I made a comment to you earlier that I don't know of another race. And look at this. Paul Gentilosi locks up the tires and Schrader's inside him once again. Watch Scott. 
Look at this. Pruitt again can take advantage because Jed Losey is off the power. Can't beat it on. And now Pruitt is sitting in the driver's seat through this left-hand bend. Pruitt right where he wanted to be to As take Baldwin. advantage. And now Baldwin will go through, too. So Jed Losey, when he locked up the brakes, might he have flat spotted a tire there? I don't think so. It was such a brief time that I think he will be all right. We're going to go back and show you that pass one more time. Here's Gentilosi to the outside. We see Dorsey Schrader sneaking underneath, and Gentilosi had to lock him up. Boy, did a good job, too. That was almost like ABS trail braking, and look at how close he came to the tires on the exit of that corner. And really Dorsey nice. Schrader's move there, opening the door for a couple of other passes, one of the slower tires going by. Baldwin actually going by him. We're on the roof of Jack Baldwin's car. Looking ahead, it's Scott Pruitt and Dorsey Schrader. Baldwin sitting back in fifth position right now. His teammate Pruitt. Up to fourth, Schrader is third as they make that left-hand corner. Now, as we're going around the track, uh, well, we'll do it again once we get a, a view from the car, but I was going to say, try and do what the drivers do, and that is to look where you're going to rather than looking where you are, and I'll explain a little bit of that later on. This battle is just so good right now. Dorsey Schrader, Scott Pruitt right behind in that Royal Oak car. As they continue to battle it out for third, fourth, and fifth position at the Miami Grand Prix, we'll be back with more on Prime in a moment. Dodge Intrepid. The press and public agree it's an unqualified success. But if you think success only comes at a high price, think again. Because right now, you can lease a new Intrepid with a V6, dual airbags, cassette stereo, air conditioning, and more for as low as $239 a month. But when the special Intrepid lease rate is over, it's over. So get the critic's choice and a great deal. See your participating Dodge dealer today. There's only one beer with pure refreshment written all over it. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft and MGD Light. Why so many people are getting out of the old and into the cold. Welcome to the University of Hawaii, an educational institution noted for its diverse curriculum and committed to quality, accessibility, equity, and accountability. The university is one of only a handful of land, sea, and space grant institutions, a designation that brings resources, programs, and opportunities in research, education, and community service. For more information, contact the University of Hawaii Information and Visitor Center, 2465 Campus Road, Honolulu 96822. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Miami. Rick Benjamin with Bill Adams. John Bissignano is pit side with us. Some great racing action here to kick off the 1994 Trans Am season. Dorsey Schrader has been the driver on the move the last several moments. He has advanced to third. Dorsey dropped back on the start. We know he didn't want to do that, but now he seems to be have things going his way. No, I think that the drop back at the start was simply an idea of how competitive these fields are. We've seen so many little moves take place where the slightest slips have caused problems. Back inside the Hot Wheels car. Maybe the car with the best sponsorship in racing. Hot Wheels. They indeed are, Jack. They sure are. Baldwin, the former champion in this series, last year finishing in one of the top point-paying positions, won two of these events toward the latter part of the year. He's hoping to get that team off to a much better start in 1994. Watch going around the track now. We can see up ahead, we're going to be sliding over to the right-hand edge of the pavement. Now move your eyes to the left and look at the inside curbing. Now look at the outside. How much room is left over? Not much. That's what the driver wants to be doing all the time, is looking where he's going to. You have to get accustomed, acclimated to watching almost the car ahead of you. Much like the driver training you get back in high school. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could have had training like this. Sure. Your rooftop with Jack Baldwin now carrying our in-car cameras here today at the Grand Prix of Miami. His teammate Scott Pruitt just ahead, running in fourth. Baldwin is fifth at the moment. Your third-place car belongs to Dorsey Schrader. Ron Fellows, a quiet second spot so far as we watch Baldwin at work, former Trans Am champion out of Marietta, Georgia. He's awfully excited. He's running in the IROC series yes. again this year. And he's going Bush Grand National Racing in a couple of weeks. Well, Jack has always wanted to do this. As long as I've known him, he has talked about trying some stock cars because he loves this type of format. Big V8 horsepower. That's just, it gets his heart going. 
Dorsey Schrader running in third position all by himself and one of the Tom Gloy Mustangs. Ray Best is just jumping on board with them as a sponsor. And we take a look also uh, at Schrader moving by. There's Tommy Kendall out in front in car number 11. Ron Fellows in the four, one of the other Mustangs, also sponsored by Ray Bestus and AER, running along in second spot. Fellows won a couple of these. Oh, and there's trouble. a major impact. That's Tony Ave, the former sports racer champion, driving Jim Durhag's car this year, car number 40. Tony Ave with the rear end of the car almost totally gone. He's obviously yep. bought the barrier a hard I shot. I am sure we're going to get a pace car out for this one because look at that left rear wheel. It is on an angle compared to the rest of the chassis. And I don't think Tony could possibly get that car moved to a safe position. Full course caution, we're told, and the pace car is yes. indeed out on the track here in Miami. Tony Ave very excited about his debut at Trans Am today. We talked with him yesterday at length. Young driver who's done very well for himself in snowmobile racing and then Oldsmobile Pro Racing now jumping into Trans Am, but his first start coming a cropper here in the early going at Miami. We're 14 laps complete. We'll be back with more in a moment. Fact. Only one magazine is the best source for auto racing news. On track. Fact. Only one magazine covers Formula One, Formula 3000, IndyCars, Trans Am, IMSA, NASCAR, and more every two weeks. On track. If you want 100% auto racing, call 1-800-825-8214 now and get one year, 25 action-filled issues for just $29.97. Call On Track now and get the facts. This is the Eagle Vision TSI, with an 11-speaker spatial imaging sound system, solar control windshield, even driver and passenger airbags. Chrysler Corporation's revolutionary cab-forward design gives you more room inside. Eagle Vision also includes a 24-valve, 214-horsepower engine, as well as anti-lock brakes. Those of you looking for a simulated wood grain dashboard, we've got bad news for you. Welcome back to Miami. This SCCA World Challenge Report is brought to you by the High Performance Eagle Vision, a sports sedan designed and built for the individual. Nice weather today, but hardly the situation on Saturday here. The SCCA World Challenge Series opening its 1994 season under dark, dark skies and lots of rain. Much of the race was hindered by the rain. In fact, we had a lengthy rain delay in the middle portion of the event, and the drivers really had to have their rain tires working well. It was an afternoon dominated by the new Eagle Talon. Car number 33, Willie Lewis, a Category B World Challenge driver, won the event overall. First time in the five-year history of the SCCA World Challenge that that has happened. And the second place overall went to car number 60 in the C category, Norris Rancourt, 60 years young. Rancourt of that Honda Prelude, a veteran campaigner, finishing second overall, getting his first victory of the year in Category C yesterday at the SCCA's World Challenge, part of the Grand Prix of Miami. Here's your Category A winner, a 944 Turbo Porsche driven by Alain Car Jr. from South America. A driver and car not normally considered among the leaders in Category A, but in the wet going at Miami yesterday, he picked up the victory. This SCCA World Challenge Report has been brought to you by the High Performance Eagle Vision, a sports sedan designed and built for the individual. Well, we're back at the Grand Prix of Miami, our first full course caution of the afternoon. Tony Ave has spun between turns one and two and whacked the barrier. A good shot in his car will have to come in on the hook, the driver of the Jim Durhag Camaro, running into problems here in the very early going. 14 laps are in the books now. Let's show you a full field rundown brought to you by Chevrolet. 
And lots of on-track action here, of course, at Miami. And covering the action for us on pit road, John Bisignano is there. John? Rick and Bill, I just talked to Tom Goy, the manager of Tom Goy Racing. He's definitely going to let all three of his cars race each other in the closing laps of this race. It's going to be very exciting. You know, for the past 25 years, I've been to some of the most exclusive fun racetracks all over the world, and I've enjoyed it. But it was Bill Adams who got the great assignment of visiting the VIP hospitality area here in Miami. It's one of the most exclusive and definitely one of the most fun places at the Miami Grand Prix. Normally, when you come to a Trans Am race, you dress for comfort. You put on a nice golf shirt and some blue jeans, tennis shoes, of course, but not at the Miami Grand Prix. Here, it's a case of style, and particularly at the Perry Ellis Grand Prix Club. The elegance starts right as you walk in, presented with complimentary champagne, and from there, it just gets better. There are art shows, there is the finest food imaginable, and later in the day in this tent, a fashion show of the latest Perry Ellis wear. Famous racing artists such as Ray Masters have displays here. Ray was kind enough to do the Miami Grand Prix poster this year, and the Perry Ellis Club is prominently featured. All of his artwork is on display. Now, if you're like me, you've complained about track food, but not here. This is the place where, before you know it, you put on another 10 pounds. They also bring charity to the forefront. As a benefit for AIDS, they have an auction. If you're a Jim Kelly fan, how about an autographed Buffalo Bill helmet? But if you want one of these, you'd better not live in Miami. Living down here, you want something like this. Autographed Dan Marino. Well, it's really hard to believe that we are actually at a racetrack. We're on the outside of turn four, and from all of this going on around us, you'd hardly think you were close to competition. But just a very few moments, this Trans Am race is going to start, and all of these people here are going to leave their drinks, their food, and their fashion to come and watch what I think is going to be the finest Trans Am race ever. We'll be back with more after this. Hey, uh, welcome to the town shop. My name is Mel with my brother. Melvin. Oh, nice to meet you. Thank you. Now, we're looking for a new image. Well, you've come to the right place at the town shop. Hooray! Change your image at the town shop. <laughs> Kickboxing action sizzles on pay-per-view. April 15th, live from the San Jose Arena. The Battle of the Masters. Kickboxing Mania 4. Featuring four world championship bouts. Troy, the destroyer of doors. Javier Thunder Mendes. Francis, Footloose Barley. And French sensation Valerie Hennon. Don't miss martial arts demonstrations from Hollywood's leading action adventure stars. The Battle of the Masters. Kickboxing Mania 4. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Miami. Rick Benjamin, Bill Adam, John Bisignano with you on Prime Network. We're in caution because of a crash involving car number 40. Tony Ave, the young driver, taking over Jim Derhag's car this year. Tony's okay, but the car certainly is heavy damage. No, it, it's uh, really unfortunate that Jim Derhag, as we talked to before the race, and there's a, a view of the car, you can see really the damage is not that extensive. It, it looks dreadful at first glance, but these are just fiberglass pieces, just a shell, the basic part of the car, the framework and the engine transmission so on, they look fine, so this car will be back out. And it's a bit of a disappointment for Jim Derhag, the car owner. This is his first, I, I hate to say, this season of retirement. Yeah. He's been with us for so long, and here he is now in the, the position of a team owner and manager, just a, a wonderful competitor. He had had the career record, I'm sure he still does have the career record, yeah. career record for most Trans Am starts and top 10 finishes. Let Dorsey Schrader drive the car at Dallas last year to close out the 93 season, and they ran very well, although didn't contend for the win ultimately. And Jim deciding that he would put a young up-and-coming driver in the car in Tony Ave. They've got some backing from ski -Doo and sea this year, and uh, hopefully we'll see them up front as the season moves along yeah. in the Trans Am. Maybe you and I can try a couple of sea Yeah, there we, there we go. There we go. Instead of a boat, we'll, we'll <laughs> downsize a bit. I don't think I've recovered from that boat ride quite yet. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
I won't take you up on the offer for the ride around Daytona after the boat ride. Well, we, we can try that, too. <laughs> this is going to be interesting, too, once this race gets underway, because this is, it, it's a two-way thing. For spectators, this is ideal to see a pace car come out. Sure. For Tom Kendall, it is just the thing that he doesn't want to see. People like Dorsey Schrader, who had worked very hard to get up into third place, now gets the luxury of closing right back up to the gap that Tom had pulled out on the rest of the field is gone. Uh, if anybody has been suffering a, an overheating tire problem, Paul Gentilosi, for example, that has given the tire a chance to cool down. So all of these cars should be back equal once again. And we'll find out how equal they are in just a moment. We'll be back with more after this. Atlanta, April 8th, 1974. Now here is Henry Aaron. This crowd is up all around. The only thing I wanted to do was hit that home run and get it out of the ballpark. I think that's going to be a record to stand for a long time. He said, meet me at the ballpark, Mama. He said, I'm going to break the record tonight. He's sitting on 7-14. Swinging. If you throw a ball 90 miles an hour, he can know exactly how hard to swing to get it out of the pump. Hank Aaron went on to hit 755 home runs. Everybody said it would never be broken, you know. I thought it was a great moment for me. I thought it was a great moment for uh, my mother and father to witness it. I thought it was a great moment for everyone. If someone come along and break the record 755 home runs, good luck. A message from Major League Baseball. Prime Ticket presents the best in the West as the Bud Surf Tour hits the California coast. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Miami on Prime. Rick Benjamin with Bill Adam, John Bisignano here. Good to have you with us for the season opener of the 1994 SCCA Trans Am Tour through the streets of Miami. Tommy Kendall has shown the way so far. 17 laps into the books out of 54. Kendall's got some very strong cars behind him so far, though. He's had really no challenge. No, he hasn't. And, and I think the most impressive thing of all is perhaps the way that Ron Fellows has been able to stay relatively close. Not in a position to challenge him, but at least he didn't get blown off. Pace car is in. The green is back out on lap 18, and Kendall takes him down into that first corner. Two right-handers, and you were telling me this is a very tough part of the course. Very, very tricky. They're carrying so much speed down that front straight, and the corner starts at a certain angle, and then right at the critical part, it tightens up. It's just one of those evil corners that they've grabbed Tony Ave. Ron Fellows with a good start, sticking close by Tommy Kendall in second spot. The other blue Mustang, Dorsey Schrader's Ray Vestas car is third. Then the Chevrolets in line. Fourth spot right now to Scott Pruitt, fifth to Jack Baldwin, sixth to Paul Gentilosi. He'd been up to third earlier, but had a braking problem and got passed by a couple of cars down on the inside. Running seventh right now in car number three. And the automobile being driven by Tommy Archer. The Archer brothers sending the Dodges into retirement. They've moved to Mustang for this year. All right, it's something that it impresses me over and over again, watching Tom Kendall use up all the track. Racing has always been, will always be a game of inches. Watch the Tom Kendall car when he enters corners and leaves corners. His braking is right on the edge of the track, and he uses up all of the available good space. I mean, he just he really is a perfectionist to watch. This is the type of thing you try and teach at driver school, to get as tight on the inside as possible going in, and then when you leave the corner, right up against the wall on the outside. If you still have room left over, then you can go faster the next time. We're on top of, of Tommy's car, and just watch this. That's through turn two, and now up a short straight. Right to the edge of the road, and you didn't see the car bump, so he didn't even get up on the curb. Again, right on the right-hand side of the road, braking. Turns to the inside, there's no bumping once again in the car. Very, very smooth through the corner. Back over to the right-hand edge. It's a flow, it's like skiing down through gates, using up all of the available track, making each corner artificially larger than it really is. As quick as these cars are, do you really have time to think about what you're doing, or does this have to be instinctive? No, uh, 
Well, certainly a lot of it is instinctive, but all of this is pre-planning. He can pick out the spot ahead where he wants to put on the brakes, where he wants to touch the inside curve, where he wants to get back on the gas. And the very best drivers in the world do this over and over again, this, this smooth repetition. It becomes a natural rhythm that then you can do it almost without thinking. It becomes second nature. Highest speed part of the course will rooftop with Tommy Kendall, your race leader here at Miami. Kendall moving through a quick left-hander and up through another short straight away back part of the race course here you were saying this is a good place to pass Phil. if there's yes. no one here to try to pass up again yeah no and it, unfortunately that little bit of water down at the start of that straight may have taken away that part as a passing spot today because no one is able to carry a lot of speed through the corner you have to keep the tires off the water or else you're going to end up slamming into the barrier Ron Fellows, again, is very impressive in staying close to Kendall. He's still shown us an awful lot here in the early going in his car number four. A lot of people thought Fellows would win a Trans Am title last year. He got off to such a quick start winning a couple of races early on, but they really had problems in the second half of the year. They need to get off to a good start. Yeah, they, they had some heartbreaking uh, mechanical failures, one at Bose Corner, which runs, well, my home track as well, uh, where he had an engine failure. There is the first sign of a slip by Tom Kendall. Just as he left the corner, you saw the back end of the car slip slide out, a little bit of a power slide up on the curb. We have not even seen him look his brake on right the edge of the track, tight to the inside. Look at how close he gets to this wall. Oh, inches away. Kendall on the medium compound Goodyear, so you wouldn't think on a cool overcast day that he would have any tire wear. Shouldn't be a problem at all. He would even have the luxury of a little bit of power sliding if he wanted to do it, so it wouldn't damage it. Here is the corner where the water is again, just on the exit, right there, and he wants yeah. to keep his tires off. Tiny puddle there, but certainly it could be very treacherous if you were to hit that in an unplanned way. But Kendall in the white Mustang, your leader. Fellows in the blue car, the blue Ray Best of AER Mustang, running in second spot, doing a great job there. And they have really started to open up a lead now over Dorsey Schrader. Dorsey evidently unable to move up and really challenge those two the cars. These cars are, they're both brand new chassis to start with. The leading car, the white of Tom Kendall's, is a Roush car. That is actually designed and built by Jack Roush and his people. The car that, uh, that uh, Ron Fellows is driving is one of the brand new Riley chassis. And these cars, according to the very best crew chiefs, are extremely sensitive to ride height, to shock absorber changes, and springing. So it, it's a guessing game on a track like this where you can't normally be tested, of course, it's, it's a street uh, of a normal city during the day. You're, it's such a premium to try and find that proper setup as quickly as possible. Some teams, because of their experienced personnel, can do a faster setup than others. The two Buzz McCall Camaros in fourth and fifth spot. Scott Pruitt in the 0 1, the Royal Oak car in fourth right now over Baldwin and fifth. Jen Losey is sixth. And the number three, one of the Archer brothers, that's Tommy's automobile in seventh spot. We haven't really had a look at him yet today. Irv Hare and R.K. Smith are battling it out for eighth, and we saw R.K., I thought, make a move by Irv Hare a few seconds ago when we had a brief glimpse of them, but we're looking now at your three lead cars. Tommy Kendall in the white Mustang, the number 11, he's out in front, and there's Fellows in second spot, and Schrader in third as they work around to the left-hand side, the left-hand corner there, and down to the main straightaway again, coming down to turns one and two. This has to be very, very exciting for the Ford people because for the last couple of years, they have just felt that their car has not been quite as good as the Camaro. The Camaro is a, a wonderful, beautifully aerodynamic race car. It's, it's aerodynamic, so it gets through the air well, but it still puts good downforce on it. Now these new Mustangs may be even superior. This is the battle for 8th, ninth, and 10th that we're looking at. We talked about R.K. Smith and uh, the car of Earth Hare battling it out. We see Hare with that advantage at the moment. That's the white-nosed Camaro. You see right there, the 15 is Earth Hare. R.K. Smith in the 25, back to ninth spot now. And uh, running in 10th spot, Bobby Archer in car number nine. Again, the Archer's moving to four this year. So a really good battle for eighth there. R.K. Smith, a veteran sedan racer. Earth Hare, a veteran of this series. They've been going at it for a number of laps. We'll update you on that battle in just a moment when we return to the Grand Prix of Miami here on Prime. Great drivers, Donahue, Jones, Fulmer, the classic pony cars, Camaro, Mustang, Javelin. Only the Trans Am series featured all of these American legends of motorsport. 
And now, for the first time ever, it all comes together on video in the history of the Trans Am Series 1966 to 1992. Trans Am racing uh, in those days uh, were, was uh, very, very exciting, both for competitors as well as the spectators. This is the Trans Am Series. This is the most competitive road racing series in North America. Packed with historic film and photos, the history of the Trans Am Series video chronicles the series from the beginnings in 1966 to the championship battle of 1992. Candid interviews with Roger Penske, Dan Gurney, David Hobbs, Parnelli Jones, and many others make this a must for any racing enthusiast. Get your own copy of the history of the Trans Am Series video for only $29.95 by calling 1-800-727-6689. That's 1-800-727-6689, or send check or money order to the address on your screen. Prime Ticket presents Fight Night at the Forum. Join us ringside for all the blow-by-blow -blow action Monday night at 8, only on Prime Ticket. Back at the Grand Prix of Miami. Great to have you with us today. The opening round of the 1994 FCCA Trans Am Tour in a battle for second spot. Dorsey Schrader in the last few moments has picked it up and he is right on Ron Fellow's tail end. Yeah, for some reason, Dorsey's car seems a little slower to warm up today. We saw it on the opening couple of laps and he fell back fifth and sixth place and, and almost looked like he got of the hunt. Then suddenly, instead of being inspired as we thought it was, just the car started to do its own. And here's the same thing happening again. He has closed right up in his teammate. I expect we will see some sort of a pass attempted by Dorsey in the immediate future because he would love to get up and take a shot at Kendall. Kendall, your leader in the white car there, the number 11. Scott Pruitt back and forth in two Chevrolets from the West with all stables running fourth and fifth. Pruitt in fourth spot in hand right now. Jack Baldwin, the former champion of the series, back in fifth in the Hot Wheels car. Your leader, though, is Kendall, then Fellows and Schrader. And Dorsey Schrader had been way behind not very many laps ago, Fellows. He's been, of course, he moved to third spot and was probably 10 car lengths back, and he has really closed the gap now. But Fellows may have seen him in his mirror and decided that the time has come to, uh, to, to put a little heat on himself. Boy, this race is staying very, very close. These all five cars, the top five positions, are very much within striking of each other. And yet, the Camaros have been a little bit worried about the Mustangs running off. In fact, they are very worried about the Mustangs at a high speed course. They're saying if they're there good, this good here, watch out at the likes of Postport and Road Atlanta, that they should be dominant. So they're quite concerned, but here, I think it has to be encouraging. All five of these cars are very close. Three different chassis. Can't ask for much more in terms of competition. One of the real attractions, I think, of the Trans Am Series over the years has been the fact that so many manufacturers and drivers have been very competitive. The victories yes. don't go all to one driver or one team normally. And uh, this year, I'm sure, will end up being the same situation by the time we get to Dallas in September. But right now, it is a Ford show. Tommy Kendall, who qualified first today, has led the entire way as we work toward lap 25, not quite halfway here in Miami. Kendall moving by, Fellows and Schrader occupying second and third, still Pruitt and Baldwin fourth and fifth. Paul Genelosi, we haven't seen him in a while, but he is soldiering on in sixth spot. That's where he qualified. He had gotten up to third at one point, but had some braking problems and has dropped back off the pace a little bit. But Kendall, so far, has really had nothing to worry about. He's just been able to set his own pace pretty much. He really has, and although I don't think he is by any means stroking it at this point, he does not want to get tangled up with these two cars. And all it would take is a single blocking incident. And he can also lap somebody who's hard to move out of his way by being blocked just for a fraction. Then the two Tom Bloy cars can be right on top. So Tommy will be pushing hard in this car to try and pull away, and he can. We talked to Tommy yesterday about the physical battle he has undertaken the last couple of years to come back after his destructive crash at Watkins Glen. Here's what he had to say about that. The hardest part, really, the physical challenges are one thing. I can't do a lot of the stuff that I love. I haven't run a step since my accident. The last time I ran was from the car back to the trailer to get some gloves, ran back to the car, got in the car, and that was the last time I ever was able to run a step. So I don't ski, I can't play basketball, all the stuff that I really enjoy doing in my off time, I can't do anymore. And, but the driving, you know, for whatever reason, uh, God obviously said, we're going to give him one thing that he can still do well, and that just so happens to be what I do for a living. And uh, so that physical part is one thing. The mental part, even though I've come back, uh, won at Daytona last year, had more poles than anybody else last season. At the end of the year, because of the way the championship shook out, we had to be a little conservative running one car against the three-car teams, and that hurt us from the standpoint that 
people said, oh, well, he's, he's running too conservative. He doesn't have the speed he used to. And so those things, even though people don't say them to your face, those hurt and those stick. And so my philosophy this year is to come out shooting, try to win as many poles as I can and as many races as I can. The championship, if it falls our way, so be it. If not, I want to win a bunch of races. Dorsey Schrader giving Fellows all he can handle through the streets of Miami here this afternoon. Ron Fellows, a, a guy who I, I'm really impressed with because I think he epitomizes what being a race driver is all about. He's got that bulldog attitude. Yeah, we, we just got to get him to chew to backwards. <laughs> so that, that would just be perfect. Ron is good. He has never been a say-die driver. He will drive the wheels off whatever he's given. And so is his teammate, I mean, Dorsey Schrader. It's a difficult position for Ron right now. That he can see that Dorsey is perhaps a little bit quicker than he is, but do you let your teammate pass? Well, maybe by letting him by, he will run down Campbell and, and they will both tire out. The chance is that he's not going to tire out, so then you hand the win to your teammate. It's, it's a very tough decision. This is the SCCA Trans Am Series on Prime. You've heard all the analogies before. Think of it as caviar for the power hungry. Or think of it as flying first class for the price of coach. Forget them. This is the Eagle Vision TSI. A sports sedan with a 24-valve, 214-horsepower engine, anti-lock brakes, even driver and passenger airbags. With a car like this, you don't need all those silly comparisons. Eagle Vision. Think of it as an Eagle Vision. Hop to the islands, Abaco or Bimini. Paradise is calling. Do the Bahamas with me. So many Call your travel agent or 1-800-8-BAHAMAS. We're not sure why you love your car. Perhaps for its looks. The way it performs. Its effect on others. Whatever the reason, at Eagle One we know how you feel. Eagle One car care products. For people who love their cars as much as we do. Because occasionally a thought does occur, why not me? First Union introduces the reality check. The loan that can turn some reasonable fantasies into reality. Just because one thing goes wrong doesn't mean it won't cause a lot of other things to go wrong. That's why there's the First Union reality check. The hassle-free loan that helps you catch whatever curve life's throwing at you today. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Miami. With Bill Adam, John Vizzignano, bringing you the SCCA Trans Am season opener here on Prime. These events are not very long. They're only 100 miles, generally speaking, in duration. So I would think your strategy is not to, you're not thinking in terms of this being an endurance contest. Maybe an hour and a half's worth of racing is all you have. Yeah, generally these are just flat out sprints, which is one of the real attractions of the whole series. There isn't too much psychology involved. If you get the best race car, the fastest race car that you can possibly get, and you drive as hard as you can for the whole race. It's not endurance or pit stops or anything else. And that really is what racing is all about. Puts the race in the driver's hands as much as anything else as yeah. we continue to watch this battle here for a second. If you're sitting in Dorsey Schrader's seat, you've raced your many oh, times. Oh, boy, would I love to be sitting. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of plan would you have to try to get by, fellas? It strikes me that this is a tight enough track that you need to really set up a pass long in advance. Well, I, at this point, normally with a car that, that has a weakness, you would set it up a long way in advance. The problem is that with these two fellows being teammates, Dorsey has to be extra careful so not to possibly jeopardize the team's chances. He wants one of these two cars to win. Obviously, he would like his own car to win, but if he can't, then he wants Ron to win. The pass must be made an absolute safety, and what he is going to do now is to wait and see if Ron might make just the tiniest error that would allow him to pass. A little bit of a slip on his part, and I think Dorsey would get through. 
as we continue to watch the battle for second, they're chasing leader Tommy Kendall. After 28 laps, let's give you the Chevrolet mid-race recap. Now zero lead changes. Tommy Kendall has led from the drop of the green. He was the pole sitter. He's been the only leader in car number 11 for the first 27, 28 laps, clicking them off at an average speed of 72.8 miles per hour. The fastest race lap so far belongs to Ron Fellows in car number four. It was second. He knocked off a 117.8 lap under race conditions. Now that is awfully strong. Boy, that is strong. In fact, a 117.8 is uh, just almost what he qualified at. The qualifying would have been done on almost empty gas tanks, and you really screw up all your courage. So here he is turning laps on a track that now has a lot of dirt on it, rubber, oil, and other cars. So very impressive. Working some lap traffic, so Schrader, who's trying to get second away from Fellows, they have to give up their pursuit of Kendall just a little. And here's Dorsey looking inside, but he doesn't quite have the room to make the pass. Your leader is Tommy Kendall. We're at the Grand Prix of Miami, the opening round of the 1994 SCCA Trans Am Tour on Prime, and we'll be right back. The ultimate in kickboxing action sizzles on pay-per-view April 15th, live from the San Jose Arena. The Battle of the Masters, Kickboxing Mania 4. Featuring four world championship bouts, Troy, the destroyer of Dorsey, Javier Thunder Mendes, Francis, Footloose Barley, and French sensation Valerie Hennon. Don't miss martial arts demonstrations from Hollywood's leading action adventure stars. The Battle of the Masters, Kickboxing Mania 4. Saving bargains in cable coops. Register to win a free beauty makeover for your mom for Mother's Day. Details at Got Chalk's Hair Salons. Lake Club Sportif, two free months with purchase of annual membership at the Essex House Hotel and Racquet Club. Silver Hanger Cleaners, 25% off all cleaning the new customers. Come experience real quality. Jones Intercable Cable Coops. Look for them in your mailbox and start to save as we have quite a battle underway for second spot as the drivers involved, Lorsi Schrader and Ron Fellows moved by the left car, Bruce Barkaloo. Your leader continues to be Tommy Kendall. Fellows is second right there in the four car. Schrader in the 12, the two Tom Lloyd teammates sitting back in third spot. Scott Pruitt, you saw the orange Royal Oak charcoal Camaro there in fourth. Jack Baldwin in fifth, Paul Genelosi is sixth. The car right behind one of the lapped automobiles there, the John Gooding automobile. He's a lap or so down. Then we see the R.K. Smith automobile, Tommy Archer moving by, and uh, Irv Hare and so forth. So a great field of contenders here at Miami. We're just at halfway. Your impressions of the first half of this race? Well, it's, it's gratifying in one respect that I was really worried about Tommy Kendall running off and hiding because he had just looked so dominant throughout the practice and qualifying sessions. Right now, we still have a race that any one of five cars in a heartbeat could take the lead and win this race, so it is highly competitive. This is the first race of the season, and a lot of these teams, including the Kendall car, Ron Fellow's car, uh, Paul Janlozzi car, these are all brand new cars. They have not turned wheels before. This is their first time on a racetrack. So to try and set these new cars up, it's, it's very much like anything else. But no matter what you deal with, whether it's a car or something else, they all have little bugs. They take a little bit of fine tuning to make them perfect. This is the challenge of the team to get their cars more perfect than the other team. As we watched the two Tom Floyd teammates battling it out for second, we watched earlier just a, a brief look at R.K. Smith going with Irv Harris. They do get out for eighth, but you've got a really interesting split, I think, here. Jack Roush, last couple of years, had not been very competitive in Trans Am. They've decided to go and build their own automobile, and so far, they're ahead of the Gloy team, you would say. Right, yeah, they are, and, and just by a heartbeat, though. It, it's staying very close, and they're in the background. There are the two Buzz McCall cars, the Royal Oak and the Hot Wheels Camaros. Now, how important is victory in this series to the manufacturers? Ford certainly seems to have their guns loaded this year. Well, I think victory here in Miami is very important for bragging rights. This is one of the most prestigious races in North America. You've got a, a major Latin crowd, people that just love racing. It's like stock car racing in the South. Well, sports car racing down here is the big thing, and, and these people love it. So if a Mustang is to win, they definitely would see an increase in sales at the showroom locally. It, it's going to go hand in hand. Plus, you've got the glamour of winning at Miami. Dorsey just taking a peek on the inside once again. But the glamour of Miami with, with the boating life, with the palm trees, the Brazilian dancers that are here, <laughs> this is the best race of all. And that 
battle continues to be very, very strong for second spot. Bellows in the four, leading Schrader in the 12. The two teammates trying hard, but trying. They don't want to upset one another. They do want to be competitive. And Dorsey certainly wants to get by, but as Bill has pointed out many times, he does not want to take his teammate out of the event by any means. You know that Dorsey Schrader's got to be thinking, I've got to get inside here at some point to make this pass. It appears so. I mean, it, right now, Ron Bellows is driving perfectly. He's very quick. He is not loose in the car. You can see the back of the car. He's not been sliding around, showing that he's abusing his tires in any way. I think Ron is driving a very smart race at this point. And Dorsey, again, has to depend on a tiny mistake. But look what's happening. We can see that Scott Sharp is actually closing up. It's a natural thing for Ron Fellows to be watching. Look at Dorsey again. Just takes a look up the inside. Doesn't quite have room. And yet Ron Fellows stayed wide enough there. He, look at this. Here's Dorsey to he the did, inside. That was a brilliant move by Fellows. He just gave him enough room to get by, but he may have lost enough speed that now the Camaro. No, I don't think he can. I was a bit worried there. I thought perhaps he had blown it, not just to let his teammate by, but maybe let the opposition by. You look at Bob Patch, the only Pontiac in the series this year. Dorsey Schrader has played second spot, and now he has started to pull away from Ron Fellows. So perhaps Dorsey knew he had the stronger of the two cars. Now maybe he thinks he can get around and make a run at Tommy Kendall here in the second half of this race. Yeah, I just I have to point out something, too. Here I am saying Scott Sharp, but Scott Pruitt. That's, that's like the Oakland Raiders and Los Angeles <laughs> Raiders. It, it's going to take a while to, to forget that Scott Sharp is no longer part of the Grand Am. Scott Pruitt moving into the car that Scott Sharp vacated. Scott Sharp going on to IndyCars this year. Pruitt back to Trans Am after a few years in IndyCars, although he talked a lot about his involvement with the Patrick Racing Team. He'll be back in IndyCars full-time next year, and we'll talk with him about that a little bit later on. In the meantime, Jack Baldwin gets back into the hunt as well as the racing for second, third, fourth, and fifth heats up here at Miami. There's your leader, Tommy Kendall. He's led from the start as we work on lap number 32, and now Schrader in second. Fellows with his hands full. He's got Scott Pruitt all in his mirrors at this point. Yeah, sometimes what can happen if you get involved in a situation like this, and there's Pruitt Scott to the inside. Dives yes. to the inside. The same place as Schrader passed him on the last lap. Now watch Baldwin. See if he can get a good toe off the Mustang down the straight. Here's the view, and at the end of the straight is an excellent spot for passing a heavy brake area. Watch what the Hot Wheels car does. Jack Baldwin is running in fifth position now in his Chevrolet. Let's look rooftop. Baldwin's car straight out in front. And the car of Ron Fellows just ahead in fourth, right in front of him, Scott Pruitt's car in Whoa. third spot. Tried the inside. Right. It looks like Fellows has gotten loose here. Just like. almost tapped her. That was very close. Now, don't forget, we've got a lot of car out in front of us. We're up on top of the roof. So there's a long hood out there projecting, too. I thought there was almost going to be contact there, but Jack did a good job avoiding it. Swing to the outside tight here, and then full car up the straight. Baldwin very, very close to getting by Fellows back there. Looked as though he had to back out of it just a little. It looks as though Fellows is having a hard time staying to the inside. Let's just see if maybe Ron's tires are heating up through the long left-hand corner. That's the one that leads to the tight left where he's just been passed on the two successive laps. Here's a right. Now, out of this, that'll feed us onto the long left. Maybe Ron's car is not particularly good through this corner. Let's watch. Does Jack close up over the concrete, back onto the asphalt? Nope, Jack doesn't have a shot this time. He's let Fellows get away just a little bit now. Scott Pruitt has really started to pull away from Fellows. Pruitt up into third spot. Bob Patch spinning out in his car number 20, the Pontiac Trans Am. Patch coming to a stop on the inside of one of the turns here at Miami. So that will cause a problem in that part of the race course. He's evidently unable to get that car refired with Matt Tools backing this year. Bob Patch back in the series full-time. The only Pontiac effort on the Trans Am Tour. And it's good to see them represented here as well among the manufacturers. We take a look again at Scott Pruitt, who is up to third spot. Ron Fellows is fourth. Baldwin is sit, rather in fifth spot right now. Really good battle. Camaro, Mustang, Camaro. So there's the sandwich. And watch how the cars compare. It's always interesting to see who has better brakes, who has better acceleration. Right there, we see Scott Pruitt pulling away a little bit. But really, it doesn't necessarily mean that Camaro has better acceleration. He just might have got out of the corner a little bit cleaner. And tiny, tiny changes. You can see how equally balanced all of the cars are. Great battle for third spot. We look down on this battle from the Blockbuster video blimp. We want to thank Mr. Blockbuster for providing Prime with these beautiful area views, aerial views of Miami for the event today. Great racing action here at the Grand Prix of Miami, and it's terrific to have you along as we kick off the 1994 SCCA Trans Am Tour. We'll be back with more in a moment. This 
is the award-winning Eagle Vision from the Chrysler Corporation. The story of the Trans Am series is now told for the first time ever on video in the history of the Trans Am series, 1966 to 1992. Packed with historic film and photos and interviews with Roger Penske, David Hobbs, Parnelli Jones, and many others, the history of the Trans Am series video chronicles the series from 1966 right up to the championship battle of 92. Order the history of the Trans Am series video for only $29.95 by calling 1-800-727-6689. That's 1-800-727-6689. Introducing the all-new Ford Mustang. It is what it was. And more. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Miller inviting you to join us this Friday at 7 o'clock on Prime Ticket for Face Off. On this Face Off show, I'll have a chance to reminisce about being the play-by-play -play voice of the Los Angeles Kings for the last 21 years. This Friday at 7. Back in Miami for the Grand Prix of Miami, the kickoff of the Trans Am season here. Good to have you with us on Prime. One of the big topics of discussion in the pit area this weekend has been the new Ford Mustangs and the body style that they're employing. Much more efficient, we're told. John Bisignano looked into that for us a little early. Motor racing has always been the leading edge of automotive technology. And in recent years, there's been a greater emphasis on aerodynamics. This Ford Mustang was the body shape that was considered that leading edge. The engineers back in 1987 were happy to have a body shape that only created minimum lift. Well, in seven years, the goals have changed. What the engineers want now is a body shape that will actually create negative lift or downforce. Enter the 1994 Ford Mustang. This very slippery body actually creates that minimum lift or downforce, negative lift. What that will do is allow the car to corner at much greater speeds. It helps to increase point-to-point -point acceleration, maximizes the straight line speed all at the time of reducing drag. What the 1994 Ford Mustang drivers are looking for this season is to have the same advantage that the slippery body Camaro drivers have had all last year. They want to be on equal ground during this 1994 championship. All right, thank you, John. Still under caution here at the Grand Prix of Miami. We'll be back to bring you more racing action in just a moment. During the Dodge National Minivan Sale, there are even more reasons to love caravan. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. In fact, depending on which caravan mm -hmm. and which options you pick, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you could save up to $2,600 uh -huh. on the minivan that already exceeds 1998 car safety uh -huh. requirements. Uh -huh. The Dodge National Minivan uh -huh. Sale. Uh -huh. The place to go uh -huh. for people uh -huh. who don't know when to stop. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See your nearest Dodge dealer today. When stress takes its toll, wouldn't it be great to have your very own personal masseuse to soothe and relieve tension? Therafex presents the Pro Shotsu Personal Massager. Unlike vibrating massagers that only rub the surface, Pro Shotsu simulates the kneading action of a real masseuse, sending penetrating waves of energy to relieve pain, stress, and sore muscles. Use it on your feet, lower back, calves, and thighs. Imagine getting a relaxing massage at the office or take it along to the gym. There's nothing that soothes, relaxes, and relieves aches and pains like the Pro Shotsu Shiatsu Massager. A professional masseuse can charge up to $50 per hour, and catalogs have advertised similar units for as much as $200. Now you can order the Pro Shiatsu Massager for three easy payments of $33. Order now. Don't be fooled by imitations. To order Pro Shiatsu, call 1-800-752-2577. We'll bill your credit card three monthly payments of $33 plus shipping and handling. Order your Pro Shiatsu for three monthly payments. Call now. 1-800-752-2577.
field still working behind the pace car on caution and Tommy Kendall now with an opportunity I would guess to cool his tires down gather his thoughts here for the last portion of the race yeah time for the psychology to start playing games that uh, you can see Kendall as he drives around the track is not wiggling the car too much he's really concentrating trying to remain as icy cold as unemotional as possible Dorsey behind him is it's a different story he's on the gas approaching quickly swerving back and forth it's always a game where you try and disturb somebody's concentration. If you can uh, get them thinking about other things, if you can make them angry, whatever you can do. Here Tom is just working a little bit. Getting ready to put this thing back under green in a moment. Tommy Kendall off to a great start so far. Won an IMSA championship for Jack Roush last year as he bounces back from a horrifying crash a couple of seasons ago up at Watkins Glen. We take you inside. Tommy was telling us yesterday he has a lot of trouble physically doing everything but racing. This is really what he has. Yeah, he does. And, and here's a good shot. Look at all the extra bars inside this Roush car. Again, as I was talking about earlier, how they were trying to actually make the roll cage a more integral part of the chassis, thereby increasing the overall stiffness of the chassis. Look at the number of bars. Any other car that we see doesn't have nearly this triangulation. Now let's take you inside the car of Jack Baldwin if we can. We can show you the contrast, I think, as Tommy Kendall throws some switches on his dash panel there and gets ready to uh, get back to racing action. We've been inside with Jack Baldwin earlier, and that uh, shows exactly what you uh, were talking about. Don't we take you up on the roof first of the Hot Wheels car? Baldwin back in fifth spot, pretty much where he's ridden all afternoon here so far. But if we go inside the car and take a look at Jack, automobile you'll notice the same thing that Bill was talking about that in fact that there is not that triangulation because we're looking back at his face but up through the windshield same thing it's just a traditional four post yes. roll cage yeah it really is just, just the bar is down the outside and nothing to impede his view at all for Candle's bars really don't get in, in the way of his vision I don't mean to imply that in any sense but it certainly does make a much safer platform for him you can see Jack now has his visor up on his helmet he's trying to get any little bit of cool air blowing that he can. Okay, almost coming down now, so things must be getting more serious up front. Getting ready to go back to green here. We'll have about 15, 16 laps to go, but we put the green back out here at Miami today. We're so pleased to have you with us on Prime as we prepare to bring you the 1994 FCCA Trans Am Championship. Well, Everybody on the brakes. No one wants to run over one another. The starting field has pretty much just stayed intact up in front. Kendall from the pole has led all the way. Dorsey Schrader had qualified at the third spot. He's moved up to second, but there's more to the story. Dorsey had dropped way back, was back to fifth at one point, really had to work hard to come back up and get into second position. Yeah, Dorsey did, and he is a guy that years ago, I can remember watching him in a, a race, and I couldn't believe his car control. Loved throwing cars sideways and pitching and catching. Spectacular. He loves races like this, and they're ready-made for him. As we're back out in front, your leader is Kendall behind the pace car, looking for a green flag next time by just beginning one lap, the final lap under caution of this 1.9-mile circuit. Ten turns here, and uh, we've talked about some of the difficult places. We haven't talked about the surface much. Yesterday, during the World Challenge, we noticed uh, the transition between asphalt and concrete is difficult in some yes. places. Yeah, even going through this corner, look right here. Suddenly, we're on an asphalt patch which finishes there, and it goes back. So that there's substantially different traction when you get on these. And in the rain, of course, as, as the other race was, it was horrendous. The differences were just amazing. But here, the traction changes quite dramatically. And sometimes you have to have faith. After we go around this right-hand corner here, there's a little bit of a straight, and then the long left up ahead. Right now, we're on asphalt. As we'll turn in, we'll go onto a concrete patch. You'll see it coming up right there. there now is. we're out of concrete. The car wants to slide like a bat, but here we're back on asphalt at the end. You think the amount the car is sliding that it can't possibly make the corner, but you just have to have faith. It eventually reaches the asphalt. That sliding stops, and your heart slows down. Trust in those Goodyear tires. And oh, say. boy, you have to. <laughs> well, the pace car should be pulling in here any moment now. We're about set to get back underway. 39 laps complete. Here at the Grand Prix of Miami, 54 laps, 100 miles, our race distance today. The Trans Am Series designed for 100 to 125 mile sprint events. And uh, really, it's, it's terrific racing because there's no point in hanging back. It's not 500 miles. It's not six hours. It's just put the throttle down and go. Yep. And something interesting, too, that we have to watch here at each of the starts so far, the start of the race and after the first pace car, Dorsey Schrader has not been particularly quick. 
Watch the car behind him. That is Scott Pruitt in that red and orange Camaro. We haven't talked much about Pruitt, but he's really excited to be coming back to the Trans Am Series this year. Former champion, young driver, yes. tremendous skills, and uh, has really had done very well in Indy cars. His team sort of fell apart underneath him, but he's looking forward. He's joined, in fact, the Patrick Racing team, and they're uh, going to be bringing Firestone back into Indy car racing next year. Pace car heads back in. 40 laps on the scoreboard, 14 to go. Kendall, your leader. Schrader is second. Pruitt is third. Fourth spot belongs to Ron Fellows, and Tommy Kendall takes him back down into turn one. Okay, now let's see what happens to Dorsey's bright blue Mustang there in second place to see if he is going to be able to hang on to Tommy Kendall as a leader. Up this straight. Yeah, he looks like he's not losing any ground at all. Now, oh, and Kendall. again, Kendall got sideways there. Kendall slid out just a little bit on the left-hand corner, but he maintains the number one position ahead of Dorsey Schrader. Pruitt, I thought, as you mentioned, Bill, he would be up there challenging Schrader. I'm, I think he got a little bit snookered at the start there, that sometimes they play accordion games. The leader will get on the gas and get off the, off the gas, on the gas, off the gas, to get that accordion like he had in heavy traffic. You sometimes do that and make that work against Pruitt at that particular spot. Going to take you back a few seconds. Tommy Kendall has not put a wheel wrong all day since qualifying on the pole, but here he is getting... Oh a little outside big power slide a less experienced driver would have been off the throttle allowing the car to come back into line tommy is not particularly worried about that but he just put in the gas he just backs off a tiny bit so it's not a long power slide beautifully controlled and the crowd i like to watch it sure makes it a little more interesting and this is one of the most interesting forms of racing around anyway but uh, when you see the drivers have to really saw the wheel and, and make the car work for them it makes more interesting, definitely. And once again, going around that long left-hander, Kendall's car appeared to get the back end out. Look at, and now there, yeah. he's doing it again. There's very consistent corners. Now, it's a cool day, about 78 degrees, rather humid. Not a day when you think the heat would cause the tires to go away. Kendall's no. on the medium compound tires, too. Right, well, as is the car in second. Once again, he's getting the back end of the car out, leaving the corner. Both of these cars have the identical compound rear tires. It's a Goodyear 430. Dorsey Schrader giving Kendall all he can handle at the moment. Dorsey just sitting back there in second spot, former champion in this series. Dorsey back full-time this year for Ray Bestas Brakes and Tom Gloy racing over the board of Ford. And he is giving Kendall a full workout at this point. Yeah, both these drivers using up all of the track. Look at Dorsey, too, right up against the wall. Here's down this long straight that finally leads on to Biscayne Boulevard. A little bit of a bump right here. and This is not the place you want to get a bump. That's 150 miles an hour. Wants to set the car sideways. So a critical part of this track. Kendall seems to get off of that corner and down the long straightaway a little stronger than anybody else. He does. He, the car and, and he look as if they're working better at that spot using the horsepower more. But in through here, again, Dorsey always blows up. Dorsey is taking a slightly tighter line at this point as well. Maybe that black surface where most of the rubber has been laid down so far is becoming a little bit slicker than hanging slightly to the inside. Much as if we watch sprint cars in the dirt and see how the groove changes and gets high and low. 42 laps complete as they put another one on the scoreboard and Kendall over Schrader down into a left-hand corner on the backside down right by the bay oh. and trouble for Bruce Barkaloo, the driver of the Data Storm Camaro. He has nailed the barrier a good lick. That's a real heavy hit. We're going to get a pace car once again because he is in a very dangerous position. Knocked some of the tires off into the middle of the course, so that is not a good situation at all. Barkaloo's car apparently stalling on the track. We're going to take a look back as we watch the replay. Barkaloo overcooked it there. Obviously, he took the bar barriers out as he uh, got into the wall coming off that corner. Boy, he sure did. He must have thumped that hard on the right-hand side. We understand the pace car will be back out again, and we will have another full-course caution. You can see Bruce and, is sitting inside. Uh, He's moving around. He's all right. Markaloo moving around inside the cockpit, unbuckling the belts. I think he was trying to get the car refired and decided that uh, he's got, obviously, enough body damage. Things are dragging on the pavement there. Pace car is back out at Miami. Tommy Kendall is your leader. We're winding the laps down here in the opening round of the 1994 SCCA Trans Am Tour. On Prime, we'll be right back. What do you do after you introduce the first compact flare side on the planet? You make an even bigger splash. Announcing the Ford Ranger Splash Super Cab. Now the cool original also comes in a more spacious rendition. The 1994 Ford Ranger Splash and Splash Super Cab. Now how big a splash you make is up to you.
Welcome to the University of Hawaii, an educational institution noted for its diverse curriculum and committed to quality, accessibility, equity, and accountability. The university is one of only a handful of land, sea, and space grant institutions, a designation that brings resources, programs, and opportunities in research, education, and community service. For more information, contact the University of Hawaii Information and Visitors Center, 2465 Campus Road, Honolulu 96822. Back in Miami, the Grand Prix of Miami, the feature event, the SCCA Trans Am season opener for 1994. Safety crew is out, still working to get Bruce Barkaloo's Camaro off the course so we can put this event back under green. While we have a break, let's find out what's going on on pit road. Here's John Visignano. Bill and Rick with 20 laps to go and the yellow flag out for the second time. There's a lot of team management thoughts going on down here. All the mechanics are meeting, all the team managers are or with their mechanics radio to their drivers trying to find out exactly what kind of situation they're in for the closing laps of this Miami Grand Prix. If they're going to come in, now's the time to do it while that yellow's out there. The track crew, the corner workers who are all SCCA volunteers, Bill, they've certainly uh, put in quite a day's labors here today. They are amazing. They get out here in the hottest sun and the rain and everything. And uh, they're, they're unpaid volunteers. They just love the racing. They come out here and they provide an invaluable service. They keep all of the drivers, all of the spectators safe. This one could take a while, not just removing Bruce Barkaloo's race car, but when he hit those tires, as you pointed out, a lot of water came out of them. We had so much rain here yesterday. It would seem that they're going to have to groom or perhaps put Speedy Dry down on that water. That's the biggest worry right now is when you come around in the first lap and you're racing speeds, being Tommy Candle, you've got to carry a lot of speed through that corner. Well, how much do you get off it? And the person following you can judge what his car does and thereby make the uh, appropriate changes to his own speed. So Tommy is in, in good jeopardy of losing the lead on that first lap right after this corner. Tommy Kendall rooftop camera view as we follow behind the Toyota pace car here at the Grand Prix of Miami. Kendall has really had it his own way. He's made one slight bobble that we pointed out a few laps ago where his car seemed to get a little loose and twitch away from him on the outside coming around the left-hand corner. But other than that, he has been uh, all alone out in front here this afternoon. Qualified more than a second quicker, which is very, very rare in this series. Normally qualifying is several cars very close together. It has been remarkably close. And something, too, that, that going back to Tommy's sideways antics, that we didn't see any of that happen early in the race. Then we started seeing a little bit of it, and then it became a little bit consist more consistent as it went on. Running around right now will cool Tom Candle's tires right back down to a very low state. Not cold. You don't want a cold tire because then they're even more slippery. But at least if you take away a temperature problem, and sometimes when you power slide a car as fast as that, the temperature goes up on it, then it becomes catch-22. The higher the temperature, the greater the slide. The greater the slide, the higher the temperature, and, and you never get it back. So if he did overheat those tires a tiny bit, now he will be back down to be perfect again. Bill, I just checked with Max Jones, the team manager for the Roush team. He has been in communication with his driver, Tommy Kendall. And yes, the car is definitely sliding around on Tommy, but there is no mechanical problem. We think that the drop in temperature here may be a good 10 degrees in the last 15 minutes. That has made the track cold during that long yellow. And of course, the tires were cold when the green came out. Whatever laps they give us to finish this race are going to be really exciting. Well, this gives everybody a chance to gear up for the last several laps. Uh, we're very, very close to the end. And if Dorsey Schrader is going to have a chance to win, or if Scott Bruett, for that matter, if he's going to have a chance to get up and challenge Kendall, they re really need to get going here as soon as we get back to green. We're told it'll be one more lap until the green comes out as the field moves through turns one and two and up by the bay the oh. first time around. Beautiful sight. What, that what a view. It's incredible. And, and maybe some of these guys like Tommy can sit and look at the cruise ships out there and the palm trees and the boats going past and appreciate just how unique and how beautiful this circuit is. While we have a moment, let's take a time out. We'll come back to get the green flag in just a moment in Miami. This is CLR, clear, an amazing product that instantly dissolves calcium and lime stains that you can't scrub away. If your shower head is shooting everywhere but down, dip it in CLR and look at the difference. No amount of scrubbing was able to remove the stains from this coffee decanter, but a little CLR and water gets it crystal clean instantly. Watch how clear wipes away hard water film from tile. Make shower doors shine crystal clear.
CLR instantly removes unsightly rust stains from your bathtub, sink, and toilet bowl. And nothing cleans your coffee maker, tea kettle, or pots and pans faster or better. Get CLR. It will work for you or your money back. Clear CLR is available at Thrifty, Ace, Fedco, Vons, Payless, Savon, Home Base. Also available at Hughes Market, Smith Foods, True Value, Clark Drug, Pavilion, and Kmart. The action is in Jacksonville, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. Pro Beach Volleyball hits Jacksonville, Florida, Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Y'all tune in now. Yep. Yeah. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Miami as we look down from the Blockbuster Video Blimp. Cars getting set for a restart here. 46 laps will be complete when they come by to take the green. That'll mean eight to go until the finish here this afternoon. An eight-lap shootout. Tommy Kendall, who has led all the way, you have to think he has got the dominant position, but Dorsey Schrader, I'm sure, has some strategy plans. Oh, there's a lot of hunger at this point. Like, you can bet that Dorsey is looking at this as the best possible shot. Look at this. Now, here's Tommy starting to play. It's a cardiac. And here he goes. Hard on the throttle. Spread the cars out. Then he'll get in the brakes to close them all up. And he gets back and forth to create bigger and bigger gaps. Dorsey's going to be really hungry. Scott Pruitt sitting back there. He blew it the last time. He wants to be ready this time because the pace car is going to pull off. Now listen to Campbell. Just listen here. On the throttle, on the throttle, and, throttle off. and then off. He's getting ready to get up through the gearbox now. Pace car swings in. We come around the final corner on the top of Tommy Kendall's automobile. Eight laps to go. He is on the throttle full tilt. The green is out. And we're back underway at Miami. Down into turn one. Kendall by three car lengths. Once again, it worked perfectly for him. A very, very smart driver, as well as being smooth and cool under pressure. And look what's happening in the back of the pack. Everybody has closed right up. You can see Jack Baldwin, Ron Fellows, Paul Gentilosi all back there. Gentilosi, too. He will want to take a tiger at this point. Really take a run at it. See who he can get past. Kendall out in front in the white car. The number 11. Schrader second in the blue number 12. They have moved away now from Scott Pruitt, who is third. They've opened up seven or eight car lengths on Pruitt's Chevrolet. And another oh, crash. Oh. Bob Patch and the Matco Pontiac is in the wall. And John Gooding in one of the Roush racing cars. That's the Mountain Dew Mustang. They got together evidently. And Patch's car uh, hitting the end of the barrier there a little bit of fire out of John Gooding's automobile he's okay though we see him moving around in there so this is going to bring out yet another caution evidently here at the Grand Prix of Miami we were hoping to be able to go to the the checkered flag without oh. any further problem Gooding gets great. re-fired great move wonderful move guys now come on a pull this thing in so Gooding is off the course patch unbuckling though and his car is evidently going to have to be removed by the record now he's not necessarily in a bad spot there he may not be totally in the line. This may not be as long a caution as we had feared. No, I think they can get this out. I, I think we might have a replay of this last restart. Maybe we could take a look at something interesting. Here. Cars under caution in that part of the course. So let's go topside with Jack Baldwin. On top. Now look at the car to the right. The number four car. And suddenly it disappears. He got by Fellows. He has got by Fellows. The green flag has not yet fallen. Uh-oh. He can't see around that corner. This is going to be a problem for Jack Baldwin in the Hot Wheels car. Now, what's the rule on that? Do you have to go by the flag before you can pass, or once the leader takes the green? As soon the as the leader takes the green. Because but up ahead, Kendall had already gotten the green flag. Jack was anticipating far too much in advance, and that will really hurt him. Well, right now, Baldwin is being shown forth, but timing and scoring will take a look at that, undoubtedly. They're still working on Bob Patch's automobile. That's right at the outside of turn one, evidently, where yes. I had a little moment of uh, trying to orient myself as to where we were exactly, but that's right at the exit of Pitt Road. He and Gooding evidently got together coming into the turn there. And it, it is such a deceiving corner because it's very wide as you come down the front straight. You can easily fit three or four cars side by side at that point. And then the track narrows, and right after it narrows, it increases the amount of turns. So it's a decreasing radius turn. Pace car is back out. We're back under full course caution again here at Miami. Patch now getting back in the car. He had unbuckled and gotten yeah. out. Evidently, he's going to sit in there just to the ride back on the record. Yeah. Yeah. They put the front bodywork of the car up on the back just to make sure it could get carried back to the team's trailer. 
They'll have some work to do on that car, but they've got some time to do it. The next Trans Am round doesn't come up until the 22nd of May up in most ports. So uh, we have some time, and these teams will have time to take care of these problems, perhaps do some testing between now and then. I wouldn't think you'd sit and yeah. not run for two. No, I'm sure that a lot of people will be doing testing because this is a, a good shakedown here. As you can see, the car is going around on the lap. They're, they're trying to keep their tires as warm as possible. Pace car still has the lights on, so it won't be going in yet. No, it won't. In fact, we're getting indications from SCCA timing and scoring. They are going to move Jack Baldwin back to fifth for the uh, restart. He is not going to be able to claim that position that he uh, snookered Ron Fellows on there before the green came out. No, maybe Jack was hoping that nobody was watching. He, he's really, <laughs> Jack, you've got our camera on yeah. right there, boy. You can't do that. We'll have to let him hear about that after the race is I over. I think so. Still behind the pace car here in Miami. This will be lap 49, I believe, going up on the board. So we'll have about five to go till the conclusion here today. Now, maybe here is the question. Is Jack a good enough corporate spokesman that he did that deliberately to get hot field more coverage? Well, that may be. He's certainly very sponsor savvy. He I wouldn't put it past him. He's smiling in there right now. <laughs> Would that we could talk to him at this point. That would be the next evolutionary step, I think, for television broadcasting races. Sure. We can talk back and forth to drivers. Pace car still out. Tommy Kendall still setting the pace. And for Kendall, if he were to lead flag to flag, that'd be quite an achievement. It really would. It's something that a lot of people said might happen, but today has not been an easy run for him. At the opening part of the race, it looked like he was going to pull away and establish a huge lead. And then all of a sudden, other cars started catching. And I don't really believe it was because Tommy was backing up. Because of traffic conditions and difficulty of passing at the Miami track, you do want to get as big a lead as possible. So it, it really speaks well for the level of equal competition in the Trans Am Series. Now we're told that Jack Baldwin has, in fact, been moved back to fifth spot for the restart where he belongs since he did jump around uh, Ron Fellows before the green came out last time. Of course, we had that immediate second caution with Bob Patch and John Gooding getting together. So that allowed the uh, scorers to put things right before we get going. Yeah. Pace car lights are out. We should be ready to go green this time by. There will be five laps to go when we get the green flag. The Grand Prix of Miami. Pace car still holding the field in check now as they swing out onto Biscayne Boulevard. Oh, on the fastest part of the course. What a marvelous race. 17 cars are still on the lead lap. Is that competition? That sure is. Oh, it's great. We've talked about the battle back a ways between R.K. Smith and Irvin Hare. That battle has been a very, very stout one. And we ought to give a call before we get to too far further along to Tommy Archer. Archer was back at ninth at one point, and he has moved up now. He is up to seventh. He's put uh, R.K. and Irv Hare behind him. And Bobby Archer has moved uh, up to 10th spot. So the Archer brothers moving to Ford now with their Trans Am machinery. And uh, they also have Bill Saunders in the field and the Highway Master Car, part of their team. And they may be a factor before this season is all said and done. Well, Pace car moves in. Five laps to go. Tommy Kendall, your restart leader, around the final turn and down the main straightaway to the green flag, and we're back underway. And Dorsey Schrader did a much better job that time. He did not let Kendall jump away, and now he's only two car lengths back. Kendall hard on the brakes through turn two, a hard right-hander. They'll move him up the short straightaway now. The road has a little kink to the left in it coming off this board. Just perfect. Well, this is it. Five laps to go for all the money. Once again, Kendall sideways right at the midpoint. In fact, you can see he just took the grass at the exit of the corners. So he used up all of the track plus more. Kendall in front of Dorsey Schrader. Scott Pruitt leads Ron Fellows, and they've got a good one going for third. Fellows is right up behind Pruitt now, but your leader remains Kendall working on lap 50. There will be four to go this time by. It is Kendall over Schrader. Pruitt is third. Fellows is fourth. Baldwin is fifth. Jen Losey is back there in sixth in the black and white car. His Rockets Sports Camaro. As we watch the leaders move down the long straightaway. Pruitt and that Royal Oak Camaro really pulled out a good gap over the fellow's Mustang going to that fast left hand. His car is working very, very well at that point. Yet at the end of the straight, let's see what happens here. Kendall goes through safely through the water. That was the number one concern. Now at the end of this straight, heavy braking at a 180 degrees long corner. And look at Dorsey Schrader again. Closes right up on Tommy at this point. Schrader trying desperately to figure out a move to make. He's running out of time. Four laps remaining as they move by start finish to put lap 50 on the scoreboard. It is Kendall, Schrader, and Pruitt, the top three nose to tail out of turn two. This is tremendous. What wonderful caliber driving. All three of these drivers. All of them past champions. 
one, two, three. Ron Fellows back there in fourth spot. Jack Baldwin is fifth. Baldwin also a past champion in the Trans Am Tour. Oh, man, look at Dorsey is just diving into that corner every single lap. What will he look to do here with the last couple of laps to go? At this point, it appears that his car is turning in better than the white number 11 car of Tommy Kendall. I think what he's maybe going to try and do is a high-risk move under a heavy brake area, perhaps at the same spot he got Ron Fellows. That's been a good successful area for him. Perhaps at the end of this long straightaway. This is this is the area where Tommy Kendall's car is strong because look at the amount of a lead at this sure. point. He just really stretches it down through the high-speed corner. But as they go up here, now we'll watch the gaps decreasing a little bit, and then as he's under braking, it closes down a lot more, and watch as he goes to the corner. Moving back onto the main straightaway, around by the pits, and he lap 51 on the board, this time by the way, three to go. Kendall back into turn number one, that right-hander. I can see, I think, from his roof camera, how much the road does change. It's not symmetrical here. Yes, oh, down. that's right, yeah, it really does close down on you, and it's a funnel effect. Now this is the area we're getting into the spot where, where Dorsey's car seems to have some strength. Here Tommy's car again. It's a little bit loose going through the corner. And look at this. Yeah. Now from that 7-8 car length lead, Dorsey Trader is down to one car length. And Scott is right behind him by a single car length. Tight into the corner. Less than a car length. Kendall is so strong out of the corners and onto the higher speed parts of the course. Dorsey, you think, would have to try yeah. to make a move on the back. Yeah, the I think so too. But Through Scott Pruitt may be able to make oh, a move. Oh, Pruitt, almost getting up the inside there. Great move by Pruitt. Now, he has been very strong on the higher speed parts of the course, as you pointed out a lap ago, too. So Scott Pruitt has not necessarily Look at Dorsey. Uh, run out of chances here. This is this is the best that Dorsey has done down the straight so far. He did not lose much ground to Kendall at all. This might give him a good shot when they do get up to this 183 corner. See Kendall took a bit of a chance, even getting his car out of the water to try and gain maybe a car length or two advantage. Schrader and Pruitt running second and third, dogging the race leader Tommy Kendall, who's been out in front since we put this one under green more than an hour and a half ago. Tommy Kendall has led all the way. Coming up, there'll be two laps to go this time by. Boy, another fantastic finish. Coming up into the tight section of the track, Tommy Kendall coming towards us. Schrader with two wins in this series last year didn't run full-time. In fact, none of these drivers were full-time Trans Am campaigners last year. So this is really a shot in the arm for the series to see these three drivers doing so well. It's something that all three of them, as, as all drivers have to watch out for, the marbles on the outside parts of the track. They cannot get offline. Look, you can see big chunks of rubber lying here. They're in dirt, actually, at that point in the track. They have to be precise. That makes it doubly difficult to pass. You can only pass in certain areas where there are no marbles. Dorsey Schrader in second spot. Your leader is Kendall. Getting very close to the end here at the Grand Prix of Miami. Now the higher speed part of the course. And again, Kendall with a good jump off that corner. The Roush car is very strong down the high speed section through that very, very fast corner. Scott Pruitt is really trying hard to the barrel. Hasn't he? A car that is obviously not quite as fast as Mustang. But he has managed to stay close and put himself in position to cash in here, possibly. Yes, very, very good run. Just the slightest error by either two of these leaders ahead of him, and he will pick up position. But so far, all three of them have driven flawlessly. No major glaring faults at all. Dorsey again, all three cars. Right knows the tail. Two laps to go as they work around this race course. 52 are complete. It's Kendall, Schrader, and Scott Pruitt, one, two, and three. As we take a look back out of the roof, the car of Jack Baldwin, he did get by Ron Fellows yeah. into that corner. That was a very clean pass right at the end of the straight. That's where the big, big nerve move is. <laughs> sure. You're going real fast, and you know you're going to be going through water to get away with it. Tommy Kendall, your leader. Dorsey Schrader second, Scott Pruitt is third, We're coming up on the final lap here in Miami. And Kendall trying to do the near impossible to lead one of these Trans Am Tour events flag to flag in his Jack Roush Mustang. You've got to be happy for a young driver like Tommy Kendall, who again, as we mentioned, has had uh, such a tough go the last few years. He's bouncing back. Oh, no! By a slower car. The leaders move by the 88 car. In some problems here. The 88, everyone navigates by him. Same thing. Fourth place car. Oh, 
that was Tom Candle's nightmare, running really? across a slow car at the worst possible spot, and look what happened to that speed that he had. It just disappeared. White flag is out. Last trip around the 1.9-mile circuit here at Miami. The Grand Prix of Miami at its final stages, and for Dorsey Schrader and Scott Pruitt, this is the time to throw everything out the window. Boy, and Schrader just threw it out right there. It got the wheels up in the dirt, left his foot in, and a big power slide coming off the corner. Kendall still holding on to the lead. Schrader up car length and a half back in second. I think Dorsey only really has one more good shot at him because when it gets to the high speed section, I think Tommy will have it. Scott Pruitt has fallen back now in third. He obviously doesn't have the car to challenge here in the late going. Less than a lap to go. Schrader putting all kinds of heat on Kendall. Kendall has managed to hold back the challenges so far. Dorsey running a very tight line through the corners, trying to get as much pavement as possible. And here he's going to see if he can maybe draft it down the straight. Watch and see how the two cars compare. Extremely close. Schrader with a good shot, perhaps, here coming down the high-speed straight section. Kendall still out in front. Heavy braking. There's one corner left. Schrader up the short straightaway in second spot. Kendall, the white car, your leader. Getting to the back part of the course. He's going to hug the inside. This is not going to leave Dorsey a chance because he's got to risk the outside if he wants anything at all. I don't think so. Tommy Kendall will win the Grand Prix of Miami. The checkered flag falls over the 11 of Tommy Kendall. Your winner to begin the 1994 SCCA Trans Am season. Dorsey Schrader checkers in second position. Oh, fantastic. And Jack Baldwin comes around next. Now, Whoa. what happened to Scott Pruitt's car? We need to check that out because Pruitt perhaps ran into some problems. He was dropping back. He had been in the thick of it up until the very last lap. And now Pruitt's car, uh, we're not seeing him in the rundown, but we'll check it out in just a moment. Baldwin managed to get by Pruitt. We're told looks like Paul Gentilosi may have done so as well. Now we're going to go back and look out of Baldwin's roof camp down the long straightaway and to the inside of his teammate Scott Pruitt. Evidently, Pruitt had some problems oh, with his car. Really almost contact at that point. I'm surprised that it looked like Pruitt was going to try and block his own teammate. Well, Baldwin does get by and move back up in the running order. Unofficially a third spot for Jack Baldwin. The Flowmaster star of the race is selected by the broadcast team. Tommy Kendall, your pole qualifier, and the winner flag the flag here in Miami today. We get a look at the top finishers moving around, waving to the fans, accepting the applause of the crowd here at the Grand Prix of Miami. Terrific race for Kendall and really for Dorsey Schrader. Well, that is going to be a really misleading stat when people see that Tommy Kendall won this race flag to flag. Oh, the whole hum of men with no action. What a great race. Also want to pass along to you that the Revestus Rising Star of the Race Award will go to R.K. Smith, who finished in 10th spot today. R.K. will get a good laugh out of that as he is one of the older drivers in professional <laughs> road racing. He's been around a long time, a past World Challenge champion, moving into Trans Am before the end of last season, and it's great to have him in the series. R.K. Smith in the 10th place today is the Rising Star of the Race from Ray Vestas. Your winner, Tommy Kendall over Dorsey Schrader. And we'll get the rest of the running order. We take a look at our case. We move by on the cool down lap, waving to the fans and the course workers. Great run for Kendall. Great run for Dorsey Schrader. And we'll talk to the winner in victory lane here in just a moment. We'll be back at Miami. Tuition's pretty high. Mm. Working hard for your money isn't enough. Is this negotiable? Today, your money has to work harder for you. No way we can afford it. I love it. Call now for your free Wall Street Journal guide to understanding money and investing. It focuses on financial markets, the risks and the rewards of investments, so you can make informed choices that could help you achieve your personal goals. Make your money work harder than ever. Call now to get your guide free when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal, where you'll find information you need to get ahead and stay there. News, insight, and analysis that can affect decisions you make. From world events to issues that mean the world to you, the Wall Street Journal hits home every business day. Get 10 weeks of the journal for just $36 and the guide to understanding money and investing free with your paid subscription. Call toll-free 800-752-2577. That's 800-752-2577. Prime Ticket presents the best in the West as the Bud Surf Tour hits the California coast. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're back at Miami. A very happy Tommy Kendall did us a little dance on the rooftop of his Jack Roush Mustang. There's Dorsey Trader alongside. Kendall, your winner. John Bisignano is with him. Flag to flag victory. Were you ever in doubt that you could hold that victory, Did that, that lead over your competition, just chewing on your bumper? Well, with, with Dorsey that close to me on the last lap, we're so close I couldn't see anything except the top of his windshield sticker. I didn't know it literally until I crossed the line. And uh, I'll tell you what, to come out here, the pressure was pretty heavy. We had a lot of folks from Ford here. They gave us the commitment way back in October. We've been working our tails off. Smith Tool Mustang was flawless. It wasn't uh, better by much, but it was better by enough. It looked like you had the biggest advantage on the high-speed uh, parts of the circuit that you could pull away down that straightaway. Was that the grip getting out of the circuit, a combination of the engine and the grip? I think it was a combination of everything. Mechanically, this car is obviously the superior to what the other guys have going right now. And then, you know, Jack Roush horsepower is pretty legendary. And the third factor being clear air, even though these things don't have big wings, that really helps quite a bit. Prime Trans Am race fans, here's your opportunity to win the SCCA Bahamas Getaway. Simply mail us a 3x5 postcard with your name, address, including city, state, and zip code. And please send it to SCCA Bahamas Getaway. Post Office Box 3278, Englewood, Colorado, 80112-3278. The winner will be selected at random. You'll receive airfare for two, dining, plus three nights at the fabulous Radisson Cable Beach and Golf Resort. Entries must be postmarked by March 10th. Employees of Prime or SCCA are not eligible. The winner will be announced on the next Trans Am broadcast on Prime from Mosport Park in Ontario, Canada, scheduled May 22nd. Tommy Kendall, you just won the Grand Prix of Miami. What are you going to do now? I'm going to the Bahamas. Harbor Island, here we go. Hop to the islands, Abaco or Bimini. Paradise is calling. Do the Bahamas with me. So many islands. Call your travel agent or 1-800-8-BAHAMAS. Don't wait. Get the news weekly of motoring, Auto Week. Don't wait for driving impressions. Auto Week drives them all and tells you about them first. Don't wait for car news. Auto Week covers the world. Auto shows the new, the old, and brings it to you fast. Don't wait for racing news. Get the news weekly of motoring. Auto Week brings you the winningest coverage first. Don't wait. Get Auto Week, the news weekly of motoring, now. Call 1-800-232-1502 for a full year. 52 issues at the special TV price of $19.95. Just 38 cents an issue. Save $80 off the cover price. You've thought about it. Stop waiting. Do it now. Call 1-800-232-1502 for the News Weekly of Motoring. Three decades in the making. coverage of the Grand Prix of Miami has been brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The afternoon's action complete. Tommy Kendall, your winner. Dorsey Schrader, second. Jack Baldwin sneaks in there for third. Just well, the end. you know, it proves you can never relax. You can never think of yourself as being out of the picture. Jack kept it up all day long, sometimes not really in the hunt, but the final lap, he was on the victory podium. This really sets us up for quite a season. I think we've got the makings of the best Trans Am season ever. Well, that would be saying a lot because this has been a wonderful series for going on uh, three decades now. But we certainly are looking forward to some great competition as we take you through the entire 1994 SCCA Trans Am Tour here on Prime. For John Bisignano and Bill Adam Imrich Benjamin, we'll see you next time from Mosport in the month of May. <laughs>